Okay, so I'm going to dedicate this video to James Corum since the late 1990s. I've been studying Concord and publishing concerned material and he's been a blessing to me in my growth and learning from the scriptures. Uh, Martin announced his going to repose this morning. Um, so, the latest, Unsearchable Riches, I'm just going to share the editorial part, and he just goes through exactly what's in this Unsearchable Riches. You can get it online, and just go to concordant.org, and you can find all the Unsearchable Riches, they're there, and uh, this edition as well. Uh, so, my prayers go out to the family of James Corum and uh, we know that death is just temporary resurrection is next and the very next moment and next conscious moment no matter how many years pass of a believer they will be raised by Christ and uh, changed vivified given a new body along with the living who are surviving to the presence of the Lord and we the living who are still surviving are still surviving but we long to be together with our brothers and sisters in Christ no matter whether in repose or still living um, God keeps us separate in this world but uh, we'll soon be gathered up in the air with our Lord I'm not feeling the greatest today so you'll have to excuse my chest and Head. I'm not going out today to work, staying home. Let's try to get rid of this. I use VIX. VIX works. It's an old old method. VIX and put a pair of socks on. VIX on the bottom of your feet and a pair of socks and that'll help the, the cold to uh, dissipate. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to share this editorial of what's in here in this unsearchable riches. So you get an idea of what this quarterly issue is all about and it's dedicated to James Corum. He wrote the editorial. Sin brings misery on mankind. Transgression calls down indignation, but an offense is the wound that aches God's heart. Page 56. We are having the forgiveness of offenses in accord with the riches of God's grace, which he lavishes on us. Ephesians 1.7. God forgives us for having offended him, for having wounded his feelings. God loves us with his vast love. Ephesians 2.4 As his children we belong to him. Hence it is un unsurprising that in our distressing deeds and fleshly foolishness we offend our God and Father. How be it, how wondrous it is that it is as we become more sensitive to our offenses offensiveness to him in respect of our multitudinous failings that we gain a greater desire to be well-pleasing to him in the casting aside of these self-same wrongful ways even if at best our progress is so doing is measured in so doing is measured for this progress we are unspeakably thankful to him in his kindness to us no epistle in the scriptures is so full of harmonies as Ephesians. There's a continual assurance that each phrase or each phase of our blessing is in accord with all the rest. Page 59. When in Greek the definite article the follows the word or words it modifies, we are being led to pause, repeat in our mind what has just been said and reflect on it as a further as is further defined page 70 much of our thinking is distorted by pride even if we have been graced to come to Christ as our Lord and Savior that is no indication at all that we are particularly inclined to repudiate our trust in the flesh as to our daily affairs page 71 pages 80 to 83 contain a revised concordant version of Paul's epistle to Titus with translation notes.
Paul saw Titus as a genuine child in accord with the common faith. Titus 1.4 What we have in common is not the same measure of faith. Romans 12.3 But the truth we are believing. It is the faithful word. Titus 1.9 Page 84 The common faith is the evangel of which Paul is not ashamed. For it is God's power for salvation to everyone who is believing it. Believing it. <clears throat> Romans 1, 16, page 85. The advent of God's grace is the intervening, rescuing, and glorious appearance of God's joyful favor to humanity in the gift of his Son. Page 87. What could be more sane? What could be more productive? of righteousness and devoutness than a faith centered upon the blessed advent of God's grace for salvation to all, which is revealed in the Evangel. Page 91. It is true that righteousness encompasses many particulars, yet in a wider pursuit of righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace, 2 Timothy 2.22, there are certain things that are basic to our approach. Besides, being practical necessities along the way. Page 92. It is critical then that we become concerned to be presiding for ideal acts. Titus 3.8. <clears throat> Indeed, we cannot very well be learning to preside over ideal acts for necessary needs. Titus 3.14. Unless we first become concerned to do so. On page 94, we present an introduction to Philemon, which is the only private, personal letter from the pen of the Apostle Paul. A perfect specimen of its kind, its powerful yet pathetic appeal is the ripe fruitage of that overwhelming grace which Paul dispensed from his Roman prison. Himself a prisoner, he captures the runaway slave and gives him the freedom of Christ yet sends him back to the master from whom he had escaped. On pages 95 through 96, we close this issue with our revised concordant version of Paul's epistle to Philemon. James R. Coram. Okay, so you can get this online. Thank you for watching. Grace and peace.